Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bible. We're going to read from Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken. Ye people, let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury is upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. You see, the Lord writes the future as if it has already happened in the past. Verse 3. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcass, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Verse 4, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Now where do we read that in the New Testament. Let's take a look. Well, the parallel verse for Isaiah 34 and verse 4 is found in Revelation chapter 6 in verse 11, 12, 13, and 14. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 11. And white robes and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. That's also mentioned in Joel, the book of Joel, and it's also, uh, if I remember correctly, in Matthew 24. But this is what we were referencing in Isaiah 34, verse 4, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So let's go back to Isaiah 34 and verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Now, didn't we read about being dissolved in Isaiah 34.4? It says, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Well, parallel verse for that is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord, ah, here we go, the day of the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are, that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Ah, here we go. 
word association, very important in the King James. The modern Bibles destroy word association. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved? Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Let's go back to Isaiah 34, starting in verse 5. Oh boy. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. What's it going to be bathed in? Blood. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. And upon the people of my curse? But the churches teach that God loves everybody. Do you know that there are people that God has cursed? Boy, you ask this question in a free will Baptist church and uh, chances are you bring it up in a Bible study and you'll be told to leave. Now, Idumea is part of Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, and it has reference to Esau and Edom. And if you listen to the so-called black Hebrews, uh, they'll tell you white people are Edom. Uh, well, there are those that are white that are Esau, Edom, but no, not all of them. Definitely not. I don't believe Christians are Esau, Edom. But take a look at this. Malachi 1 and verse 4. Well, let's take a look. We'll take a look at the whole chapter. Malachi 1.1 1, 1, The burden of the Lord, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God does not love Esau, Edom. And if you want to know why, I've got a Bible study on it. Just send me an email for as long as my YouTube channel's up anyways. All right, so let's go back to Isaiah 34 and verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Now, in uh, Obadiah 1 and verse 18, if you want to know why God hated Esau, well, first of all, he despised his birthright, which was a gift from God. and He sold it for basically a bowl of beans, 
That's how much he despised the gift of the Lord. But secondly, he polluted his bloodline by marrying into the Hittite Canaanite seed line, which came from the fallen angels. Now, 95% of your churches approximately will deny that's even possible, but they're wrong. They're wrong. What can I tell you? Of course, they're the ones that tell you God loves everybody. But let's read Obadiah 1.18, and you tell me that God loves everybody. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them. You ever heard of kindling a fire? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Now, Amalek was a grandson of Esau. Numbers 24.20 And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Oh, does that sound like uh, the Lord loves uh, everybody? Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. But God loves everybody. Uh, no. How about... Exodus seventeen sixteen. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war, that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. War with Amalek from generation to generation. Yes, uh, you know, that's why the pastors discourage people from reading the New Test I mean the Old Testament. Don't read this kind of stuff because you'll ask questions that will upset their theological apple cart. Make sure you read Genesis, I mean, uh, uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Bro, back to Isaiah 34. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Isaiah 34 and verse 7. And the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Now, people, it's the uh, owners of the media that has a white horse with a horn sticking out of its head and calls that a unicorn with a rainbow behind it and funny little multicolored stars coming out of its backside, you know, as it's flying through the air. No. You know what a unicorn is? It's the Indian or Asian rhinoceros, as opposed to the African rhinoceros, which has two horns. Matter of fact, uni means one. Perhaps you've heard of a, a uniform, a uniform, one form. You know, all the police, all the military, they all wear the same type of clothing. And... Uh, Matter of fact, the Asian or Indian rhino, its name is even called Unicornus rhinoceros or rhinoceros. Look it up. So when did a rhino become a, a white horse with uh, sprinkles and a rainbow? You know, the uh, LBGT whatever sicko thing. All right, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, 
Ooh, that don't sound good for the unbelievers. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. What is pitch? Tar. Have you ever seen a road catch fire? Asphalt? Oh yeah. Verse 10. It shall not be quenched night nor day. And that's this fire, right? The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the comorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall be called, I'm sorry, they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortress, fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. Now, dragons are always associated with uh, the devil and Satan as far as the Bible's concerned. Read Revelation chapter 12. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. What's a satyr? According to Greek mythology... A satyr is a, perhaps you've heard of the, the god Pan, half goat, half man. From the waist down, it's a goat, and from the waist up, it's a man. That's a satyr. I don't know why they, I don't, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that's what Greek mythology says it is. I don't know what exactly what it is in the Hebrew and I'm not sure anybody does that lives on this earth and the satyr shall cry to his fellow the screech shall also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest there shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow there shall the vultures also be gathered every one with her mate do you know in the book of Revelation it talks about the um, the fowls being filled with their flesh? Personally, I believe this is in a reference to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 19. Revelation 19, 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So the world's getting gathered to fight against the Lord. Verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. 666. And them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain, with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Say that real fast five times. So, Isaiah 34, 15. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fall. None shall want her mate. For my mouth 
it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it for ever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. And that, everybody, is the end of Isaiah chapter 34. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.